going on, Coyote class? And welcome back to Ask a Biologist. It is Monday, Micro Monday, Micro Monday. We're talking about ticks today. Yeah, a lot of stuff to talk about with ticks. I didn't realize how much there really was before doing research last year. We'll, we'll get into that in a minute. That's an episode that never came to fruition. And then, of course, your advanced lesson plans today. Yeah, um, I, I feel like we're, is our table off center? I think we've got to move over a little bit. There, there you go. I'm like falling off the screen there. I think I might have moved the camera a little bit. We had to readjust because when Snarl Carl, the Siberian saber-toothed snowcat, was in here for Friday's prehistoric Friday, yeah. we had to kind of reset the, Took up a lot of space. Yeah. But this Friday, we're going to switch it up. We were just talking about this prehistoric Friday. This Friday is going to be turned into cryptozoology Friday, and we're going to be talking about Bigfoot. Yeah, that's kind of makes sense. Though. We always tease Bigfoot on the Brave Wilderness channel, but we've never full-on gone into something that was like, oh, we're talking Bigfoot. Yeah, and you're kind of um, a, a Bigfoot uh, expert. I'm, I'm a self-proclaimed self Bigfoot expert enthusiast. You've got a lot of history yes. with Bigfoot and your fascination yes. for what a Bigfoot is. I know so. a lot about Bigfoot, strangely enough, but I've never seen one, just to make, make it clear. I Are saw a sure? black bear once, and I was like, maybe, but then later that day on the news, this is when I was a kid, it was reported okay. that a black bear was spotted in my area. Kid you not, my neighbors and I had seen a black bear. Gotcha. Yeah, so I thought, thought, thought it was Bigfoot. Bigfoot. I okay. thought it could have been Bigfoot. Anyways, all right, let's get into it, guys. Welcome to class. I know what we're going to do first is ask afternoon announcements. Afternoon announcements, And the yes. first thing we need to announce today is the winners of the Bullet oh, Ant Video Challenge. Holy cow, did we spend a lot of time sifting through all of the videos. We're going to announce the winners now. Okay. This was more impressive than the Megalodon team. As far as the number of people that went out and created actual videos. I think so. I, I think uh, we spent a lot of time laughing. It's yeah. just like, like, man, that one's great. That yeah. one's great. So it's very difficult to pick. Um, everyone's a winner, but yes. we do have the three finalists. Well, we have the, the three. The, we have the grand prize, grand prize and the first, second, and third place. Okay. So in case you missed our announcement on Friday, instead of just winning a Brave Wilderness Bullet Ant, we decided because there were so many good video submissions coming in, we were picking three people that would win bullet ants and one person that is going to win the grand prize of a Brave Adventures, uh, Brave Wilderness Adventure Kit Series 1 Insects nice. and Arachnids. So without further ado, okay. I'm going to go uh, in reverse order here. Okay. So in fourth place, uh, Walker Hanna. Congratulations, Walker, 10 years old. Did phenomenal acting and editing. This one was actually three minutes and 52 seconds long. Right. Sent to me over email or to Brave Wilderness Contact. It was forwarded to me. Phenomenal. Titles, memorization of the script, the acting was on point. Walker definitely gets the Yeah, I mean, I kept saying, are you are you okay? I thought, like, maybe. Yeah. Was it okay? That's, no, that's good acting. It, it was legit. Uh, coming in at number three. Now, this technically wasn't a reenactment, but the creativity that was done with this was just blew my mind. It was incredible. And didn't this this person did just do bullet, they did bullet and, and tarantula. So congratulations to Creature Cal. You come in third place. You are also officially getting a bullet ant. Nice. And what I loved about that is Creature Cal created an animated character of himself going through the sting of the bullet ant and the tarantula. Very creative. Mm -hmm. He kept this dialogue between himself and then his cartoon self. And yeah. I guess he's, he does all the illustrations. I mean, it was funny. I, I, I like the Spider-Man aspect. Yes. Not only did I watch the videos on YouTube, so the ones that he tagged us in on Instagram, and then I went to the YouTube page. You guys should definitely go out and follow Creature Cal on YouTube. Brave Wilderness is now officially following Creature Cal. Nice. Super impressed with his animation. For, for a young member of the Coyote Pack, yeah. Dude, on point. Uh, okay, coming in in second place, Tinsley. Tinsley's reenactment, um, she's a, a young girl, mm -hmm. had the costume on point, had the script memorized. I mean, everything about Tinsley's performance, I was like, wow. I think she may have been the youngest winner in the group, and I was impressed. Yeah, and, and what's great is, like, the camera person yes. right, is parents usually yep. and it's cool how they're kind of also participating and encouraging so awesome yep. yeah Tinsley did a great job okay so without further ado the grand prize the winner of a brave wilderness adventure kit series one insects and arachnids goes to brazil ah. nature brazil nature this was voted on by several people within wilderness yeah. productions brazil nature didn't only do just the bullet ant sting 
also did an alligator bite, the alligator which bite, involved yeah. jumping into the swimming pool to catch the alligator. He even drew red bite marks on his arm. Unbelievable. It had the costume down, there was music, there was editing, and yeah. the script memorized almost perfect. I mean, he also had like a little dot that looked like yeah. he got stung by something. And, and several kind of kids like, did. did there were several kids that drew the stings on there. Yeah. Um, some people that put beards on their faces. Like, I did see that as they, well. They were above and beyond fantastic guys. Congratulations. Everybody that submitted got their full bonus points. We're still cycling through. So if you haven't gotten a comment from myself or Mario or likes, uh, we're still working yes. to, to comment through all of them. But we have watched them all at this point. Um, and they came in everywhere. Email, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Instagram yeah. Super impressed. Loved it. Yeah. It, it was very hard to pick the, the winners. Yeah. Um, just any, there was someone that actually got bit by a Mosasaur. I saw that. I saw the Mosasaur one. I mean, it right in the bathtub and went prehistoric. <laughs> yeah. Went prehistoric with the Mosasaur. That was fantastic. Okay. So, guys, we are going to do plenty more contests. Remember, right now you guys are all also competing for Student of the Week. Now, the way to get Student of the Week is to take pictures behind the scenes of you watching the live streams. If you're taking and writing down notes, take pictures, tag us on Instagram, tag yeah. us on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, we do announce a Student of the Week at the end of the week. And we are getting ready to jump into our third week of Ask Biology. Wow. Lesson plan 13. Lesson plan 13. So we've done two full weeks, a Thursday and a Friday previous to that. Now we're going for five more in a row. Let's do it. Right? Here we go. We are talking ticks. Guys, get out your pencils, your notepads, your iPads, your smart pens, whatever you need to do to take down the notes. We're talking ticks. Ticks. And not the blue cartoon character and comic book that was around when we were little kids. Oh, I remember that. Remember that? I remember Mr. that Tick or something? Uh, no, I think it was just called the tick. The tick. It was yes. just this dude in a blue suit. I used to watch it after school. They're not blue. They're not blue. They're of all sorts of other different colors, and they are parasites. Something that feasts on us. And this time of year, they're getting incredibly active. So let's talk ticks. Yeah, and that's why we actually pick ticks because it's springtime. Yep. And that means people are going to be going out more often. And of course, the ticks are now going to be more active. Mm -hmm. And we want to talk a little bit about the natural history of ticks and how to stay safe from these little parasites. Yeah. Because technically, they are parasites. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would agree. Now, so, okay, go, up. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, Probably one of the most interesting aspects about ticks is that they are actually arachnids. See, this is crazy. I I knew this. Mm -hmm. we, we, real quick, we did a lot of research yes. last year on ticks because we attempted to make an Eaten Alive by Ticks video. I'm not going to say much more about it because we are going to attempt to create it again this year. It was actually one of those those videos that was a failure. Right. It was a – we failed. We failed. And we failed because I was only capable of getting one tick on my body. Which is amazing because I I'm, tried hard, and I'm sure you guys experience this when you go out and you're not looking for ticks, mm -hmm. and you're looking for something else and just enjoying yourself. Usually, you can come back and be full of them. Yeah. So we thought, well, let's just take it next level, and uh, we thought it was going to be super easy, but it was not. No. So we're going to attempt it again. And when I say we really tried, I mean I was walking around on my hands and knees through fields of grass that was chest high, yeah. trying to get covered in ticks. And I don't want to give anything away about the video because we are going to attempt to remake it again this year. But Eat Alive by Ticks, coming soon to the Brave Wolves okay. channel, maybe, if we can pull it off. Okay. But what I didn't realize until we had done research for that episode is that, yes, ticks are arachnids. They have yeah. eight legs. So I like the question you posed here in your lesson plan, Mario. Do you have arachnophobia if you're afraid of ticks? Technically, you would have arachnophobia. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, I guess I'm more annoyed at ticks. Than afraid? Ticks creep me out, man. They're one yes. of those things that definitely creep me out. More so than spiders because a spider gets on you, you're probably going to notice it. But a tick is so small in many instances mm -hmm. that they're getting all up into those places that you don't check until you're probably getting into the shower. Yeah, I agree. I, I think out of all the animals out there, um, I'm generally not afraid of many species mm -hmm. or creeped out, but the ticks do creep. Well, they creep you out because not only are they feasting on your blood, they also can transmit a slew of different diseases. And we'll get into that yes. in a second. But let's talk about ticks. And for Micro Monday, you guys know, Micro Monday constitutes animals that are small. That you have to film with a, 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 a macro lens. We don't even have any props here because no. we don't have anything that is a tick. I don't, I don't have any toy <laughs> plastic tick. I got it one outside by 
Maybe, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. We don't have a tick with us here, Yeah. Um, but they're incredibly small. Mario, how small are these creatures? Uh, so far, I would say they're the smallest of the microorganisms that we've shown on Micro Monday mm -hmm. um, or featured. So about three to five millimeters long. That's tiny. That's tiny, yeah. That's like, that could be like the tip of a pencil or the size of an eraser. Now, what's very, um, what's, what's quite amazing is that that little tiny tick, though, once it starts to suck your blood, because that's what they eat, uh, they'll actually engorge themselves to like double or triple that size to the point where you can actually see them a little bit better. So here's an interesting question, and I'm, I'm bringing this up because you just said the ticks are eating the blood. Mm -hmm. Because blood is a liquid, are they drinking our blood or eating our blood? I got into a, bait, a debate with somebody about this this past week with leeches. Are they eating our blood or are they drinking the blood, or is it kind of one of the same potato potatoes? They're ingesting, ingesting. The blood. So okay, you could say that. And yeah, then, and, and, that then, and, then, and then it takes care of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they're ingesting our blood. Yeah. And yes, they start off small, and when they engorge themselves in blood with blood, yeah, they get pretty big. Yeah, I mean, they get what, like the size of a raisin or something. Yeah. Like, some, some almost to the size of a small grape. Like a little grape. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the most. Seeing a tick that's engorged, mm -hmm. that's even creepier yes. at that point. And then all I want to do is pop it. Oh, <laughs> gross. I don't know. I but, you've, but, but when you see one where, unlike an animal, because let's, let's back it up for a second, because we chose ticks today because in the springtime, especially now that we're, we're stuck in this realm of coronavirus and quarantine, and a lot of us are just getting outside to adventure in our parks. I know here in Columbus, locally at the Metro Parks, I mean, the parking lots are full. People are doing everything yeah. they can to get out on the trails. But this season for ticks, they're going to be incredibly active. Lots of humans out there to feast on. But have you ever seen a tick engorged on a human? Um, not fully engorged. Mm -hmm. No. And, and that's based on my experience. I've had ticks on me that I found. Yeah. And, and then they do have blood in them. But, oh. but if you have pets, then yes. you certainly probably have seen a tick on, on a dog or yep. a cat, especially dogs. That have been engorged. Okay, so let's talk about back. Let's let's back it up here to ticks and ingesting blood. Mm -hmm. Now they are eating blood and only blood. It's not like they're looking to crawl into your ear and eat some earwax or up your nose to eat some snot. They're looking for blood. Yeah, but they're not picky when it comes to blood. They'll eat the blood of pretty much any organism. Yep, mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians. Um, it's common for us to catch like reptiles, like mm -hmm. snakes, and monitors, whatever. And, They'll have ticks on them. Yeah. Um, some animals are better equipped at getting them off. Mm -hmm. Others, you know, they get on the spot. They're not getting them off. Right. You know? Yeah. A lot of times, um, you know, you're not necessarily getting close enough to any mammals in the wild, be it deer, raccoons, coyotes, foxes, wolves, to actually see the ticks on these animals. But yes, I'd say a great example of a place that you'll find ticks are people that have outdoor pets. Yep. Whether it's a cat or a dog that lives outdoors, these animals oftentimes do find themselves with ticks. You may, you may not even recognize a tick. When it's on an animal, it almost looks more like a, a weird growth or a pimple. Right. Uh, because when the females, the females are usually larger than the males, and when they completely swell up their bodies, it's like it's like 25 times larger that they can grow once they become engorged with blood. Yeah, and really good point that you made is we often don't look at like a deer up close right. or a fox, but chances are in this spring and summer, you were to catch a fox or any mammal, are you catching foxes? I'm not, I'm not saying to catch foxes. <laughs> Don't try to catch foxes. But if you were to look at one of those animals up close mm -hmm. and investigate, if you were a vet, chances are you're going to see ticks. Yeah. All animals will have a certain amount of parasites on themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a point where um, if an animal is sick, has a suppressed immune system, then they're going to be covered in ticks, and that mm -hmm. becomes like an emergency for that animal. But generally, if you're a healthy animal out there, you know, you could support a few of these ticks and parasites on you right. and be okay. It'll be more of a disturbance. Okay. Now let's talk about where do ticks come from because this just seems like some sort of, you know, ridiculous trick done by some, some alien species out there in the solar system that's like, let's throw these little creatures <laughs> down on a planet. But they actually have a very interesting life cycle. Um, they do. Which I didn't know a lot about until we researched it for the episode we attempted to create. So Mario, walk us through the, the life cycle of a tick. It's okay. rather complex for such a simple organism. So here's one interesting aspect. You could start off in winter. Yeah. Right? In winter, um, you know, we 
besides it being really cold and you're like, ah, oh, it kind of sucks that it's cold. Uh, but if you go outside, you're less likely to get ticks on yeah. you. All right, that's because they actually go dormant. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little too cold. Uh, animals are not as out as often, so they don't have enough hosts to basically get blood. Right, a lot of mammals um, are hibernating and stuff like that. So other than the deer, there's not much right. enough to feed on. Now, you're not completely safe because I did learn this. A tick can still come out in winter mm. and attach to a host and, and drink blood. Now, a, a host is actually one of our vocabulary words. Ah, ding, 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 okay. ding, ding. First vocabulary word of the day is... Host. And what is a host? Well, a host is someone that throws a party and invites people. Wrong kind you, of host. Right? Unless you're unless you're uh, you're inviting over a bunch of vampires to drink blood right. or ticks. Then what is a real host? Yeah, so in the biology's uh, term, a host is an organism that is infected mm -hmm. by a parasite or by a pathogen. So we're going to say parasite. Okay. Because actually, even though I said earlier that ticks are parasites, they're ectoparasites. Ectoparasites. Meaning they're outside of the body. They're okay. not internal. Right. Like worms. Right. If your dog gets worms, those are internal parasites. Okay. If your dog gets a tick, ectoparasite. So same host, with leeches. Leeches, same with leeches. also ecto. And that's spelled E-C-T-O. Right. Parasite. So they live ecto outside. Parasite. So yeah, a host is basically the animal that that tick is drinking blood from. Hmm. And, you know, the host could be, like I said, a reptile, a bird, a dog, you, mm -hmm. me. So that is a host. So, okay. In the winter, the ticks are kind of dormant. Once spring comes around, it starts warming up, things get thawed out, the ground, that's where they start to come out of. Right. Um, More grasses and stuff like that growing, because they, we'll get to that in a second, but they love being in tall grasses. Right. So let's start off with the life cycle. There's eggs. Mm -hmm. Females can lay thousands and thousands of eggs. Thousands of eggs. Yes. Imagine that. Thousands of eggs laid by hundreds of thousands of ticks. Right. Which means the tick population on our planet, I mean, that might be rivaling ants and bees at this point, right? I don't know. That's don't crazy. Know. That's There's a lot of them. A lot of ticks out there. Yeah. So what's cool is once the egg hatches... There's going to be a larva, mm -hmm. right? And this is where it comes a little becomes a little confusing because I said that ticks are arachnids. Mm -hmm. How many legs do arachnids have? Eight. Eight, right? That's what distinguishes them from insects that have six legs. Mm -hmm. Well, when a tick hatches, it actually has a larva phase where it has six legs. Wow. So it doesn't know if it's an insect or an arachnid at that point. It's a little confused. Not. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so... Now, one, once the larva hatches out, its goal is to find a host. Okay. So it finds a host, and it latches on, and it starts drinking blood, and it starts to grow. Okay. It'll grow into what's called a nymph. Mm. Okay. And uh, at that point, it's, it's shed its skin, bolted a mm -hmm. few times. Uh, once it's a nymph, nymph, it has eight legs. Okay. So now it's kind of looking a little bit more like a regular tick. So, like in its second stage, essentially, second it stage. starts taking on its its gross tick appearance. Yes, and and, and at this point too, by the way, um, it's hard to uh, it's hard to show, but we're talking super super tiny. Yeah, you never you would likely never see a nymph tick tick, but yeah. a nymph can latch onto you as a human. They so. can. I, I've had nymphs on me. Yeah. You have too. Sometimes you see like, oh, is that a different species that's on because. It's super tiny. No, it's, it's usually a nymph. Or it looks like a freckle. Or it looks like a freckle, yeah. yeah. When we were in Brazil, actually, the ticks there, mm -hmm. we must have been getting attacked by, by the nymphs because they're super, super tiny. Mm -hmm. I actually almost brought one back on the airplane with me. It was stuck to me. I found it at the airport. So anyways, um, so you've got the nymph, and then it its next goal is to latch onto a host mm -hmm. again. It'll feed. It'll go through molting cycles, and then it'll become an adult. Okay. And then the adult... Will then latch on again and gorge themselves. And if it's a female, it needs to gorge itself to prepare to mate. Mm -hmm. Once it mates, um, then it will lay eventually thousands and thousands of eggs. But the good thing to note, if you don't like ticks, is that after the males breed, they die. And after the females lay their eggs, they also die. Yes. Which I guess you can afford to do when you've laid thousands of eggs and thousands of your babies are going to go out and go through that same process. 
year in and year out. Yes. Ticks are just reproducing like there are stars in the sky. Yeah. And, you know, you might think, man, that's kind of scary. But I'm terrified uh, right now. What are you talking about? I thought this was supposed to be Micro Monday, not terrifying Tuesday. It's becoming Tuesday. terrifying Tuesday, right? I mean, a tick could be either terrifying Tuesday, weird Wednesday, yeah. or Micro Monday. I guess Monday. it fits on Micro Monday. I mean, if you're going to start your week off, we well, might as well start it off. Well, this is a public announcement. We're, we're talking about safety here, too. No, we're getting again, into it. We know that people are going to go out and, and right. enjoy nature. No, this is this is important to know. Don't worry, guys. We are going to get into um, – we've got to move along a little quicker okay. here. We do have we, we we do want to get into the how you properly remove a tick once you are bitten by a tick. Okay. So, um, real quickly, take us through how ticks find hosts. So we gave you guys the life cycle. Basically, it's four stages from yep. egg to full grown tick that's getting ready to lay yep. more eggs and complete this repeat this cycle. But how do they actually find their hosts? Whether it's a nymph or an adult, they have a very interesting tactic for finding their victim. Yes. Uh, it's called questing. Ah. So you can think of a little tick out there on a quest. Mm -hmm. He's on a quest to find a host. Me, 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 me. Right. And actually what you're doing <laughs> with your... I know. I did this on purpose. Yeah. I read your lesson plan. What you're doing with your, do with your hands there uh, is what they do as well. They actually will crawl up onto like a, uh, a blade of grass mm -hmm. or something that's high. And then they'll extend their, their front legs out. And if something passes by, they'll latch on mm -hmm. to that animal. And the way they know that's an animal or something viable is they actually are detecting the carbon dioxide that's mm -hmm. coming out of an animal, like a warm-blooded animal's mouth, um, ammonia, your sweat. So they actually will scent uh, or smell the scent of a potential prey. That's crazy. So not only are these things creepy looking, they're also lazy as all get out because they will just crawl to the end of a piece of grass and go, me, 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 yeah. me, me, me. And then when you pass by and brush up against them, they're like, that's something that I can eat, and they grab on. So essentially, the tick was not pursuing you. You right got next you to the tick. You put yourself right into the into the buffet line for the tick. Now that organ that they use to detect CO two and ammonia, basically any animal that passes them by is called a hollers or hallers organ. Yeah, which is pretty crazy that a little creature has such a fine tuned little sensory organ that allows it to pinpoint its victim. Right, because honestly, they don't really have good eyesight. Uh, they don't have really other good senses. So right. that's what they rely on. Right. Yeah. Now, when it comes to tick-borne illnesses, I know this is one thing that a lot of people are afraid of, which is, I guess, why this could have gone for a terrifying Tuesday as well. Mm. I mean, I certainly, as a kid growing up, and real funny, quick side story, my sister, when we were little, mm. in Arizona, got a tick lodged in her scalp. My okay. sister had crazy thick hair, right? So we didn't even know that that tick was in there. And she was like, my mom was like brushing her hair. She was little. She was like, I don't know, six, seven, eight years old. And my mom was like, what is growing? And my sister freaked out. Now, this wasn't just like, so it was engorged. It was like the size of a grape. My mom was like, we got to take her to the hospital. And I'm like, let's just pull it out. And sometimes there's like rumors like, oh, if you hold a lighter behind it, it the, the heat will draw right. it out. We're going to get into that in a second. That is not the right False. thing to do. We did take my sister to the doctor. They properly removed the tick. But what I'm getting at, I don't know why, that, that's just my side story for yeah. the day. When it comes to diseases, that's what people are afraid of. That's what my mom was afraid of because yeah. this was a tick that didn't just bite my sister. It lodged itself into her scalp. It was just, I mean, I think it, it ate her brain. It was big enough that I, and knowing my sister, I, I'm pretty sure it ate I'm part sure of her brain. I'm sure your sister doesn't appreciate that. What are you trying to say? No, my sister's brilliant. I'm saying that she had enough brain that this tick was like, I can't even eat So I went in and sucked the brain. Yeah, no, a tick can't suck your brain out. But here's the important thing to note about ticks. If you are out exploring, if you find a tick crawling on you, you don't have to feel like you've caught a disease. If you've got a tick that is latched to you, you don't have to feel like you've gotten a disease. It takes between 36 and 48 hours for that animal to be on you and drinking your blood for to transmit any of these tick-borne diseases. Right, and that that is a direct quote from the CDC. Yes. Okay, so they know their stuff. Um, so you're right. A lot of people, including myself, when I'm out in nature walking around and there's ticks on me, I kind of get a little worried. Yeah. Um, so the good news is if you see a tick on you and it's latched on, 
just have to get it off as fast as possible, right? Right before it's in that engorged stage. If it's not engorged and you take it out, that means it hasn't been there for that long, right? Um, once you take it off, then you have to wash it with soap and water. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you do get irritation, but if that tick stays on for more than 36, 48 hours, then yes, there are tick-borne diseases out there. Twelve right. or so in the U.S. alone that can be quite dangerous. Yeah, and the, and the most dangerous for sure is, is one that you guys are probably familiar with, something called Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. Lyme disease is only transmitted through deer ticks, also known as the black-legged tick. Now, this is a very small tick species, and I certainly encourage you to go out after this, this podcast and look up tick species so that you can properly identify right. um, what these ticks look like. Because the deer tick is not the most common tick species. I would say, at least within the eastern half of the United States, the most common tick is the American dog tick. Yes. Now, the American dog tick, though, can also transmit diseases as well. They can. Actually, there's a list. Uh, once again, this is from the CDC, Center for Disease Control. Uh, they have three species in the United States that, that are most common mm -hmm. and that pose potential danger. That's the black-legged tick, right, yep. as you mentioned, the lone star tick, mm -hmm. and the American dog tick. All of these can transmit certain diseases. I would say the black-legged tick is one of the most dangerous yep. because of the Lyme disease. Again, that's the deer tick, the same thing as the deer tick. Yeah, uh, and then you go down in terms of danger levels. Uh, so um, for the American dog tick, they can also do what's what's called rocky uh, rocky mountain spotted fever. Rocky is mountain a big spotted one that, fever. Probably yeah. the most dangerous disease that the dog tick carries. Now, the American dog tick does not carry Lyme disease. That's one misconception that somebody sees a tick and they automatically are like, oh, yeah. I might get Lyme disease from what this is. That is only the deer tick. And it all depends on what part of the United States you're from. Right? Also, also so, true. Um, the black legged tick is most common actually in the eastern mm -hmm. U.S actually uh the lone star tick as well eastern u.s mm -hmm. um not so much western part of the desert so uh the american dog is eastern u.s only mm -hmm. actually so there's a lot of ticks that are found mainly in the eastern u.s because of the habitat and the um yeah the, the habitat because out west a little too dry some of these ticks can't survive right now, when it comes to ticks uh, internationally, we've got ticks on, on all different continents. Anywhere that is a warm climate right. can, can sustain ticks. And, and we've been bitten by ticks in multiple different locations. Uh, I've been bitten by ticks in Australia, South America. Uh, didn't get any ticks in Africa, but there were definitely ticks on the lions. The lions yeah. On the lions. Huge ticks. I mean, the biggest ticks I've ever seen were the ones that we took off those lions. So. Real quick, I want to go into how do you properly remove a tick? And right. Part of the reason I told that story about my sister is immediately my mom was like, well, I don't exactly know the best way to remove this tick. And there's a lot of misnomers out there when it comes to removing ticks, just like there are leeches. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for example, when we did go to Brazil, I had a little tiny tick on me that I found at the airport right mm -hmm. before we are going to board the plane. I actually, in my panic and being at the airport, it was actually almost in my belly button, Ugh. which is just nasty in itself. Uh, taking the belly button is uh, horrible. I remember I, I just like quickly like pulled it off, yeah. and I think its head, its mandible, was still remained. And I kid you not, for probably a month, that itched like really bad. Yeah. Um, so what did I do wrong? What you did wrong is you quickly just yanked the tick off. What happens if you just grab a tick and yank it off with your fingers as fast as possible, oftentimes you will rip off part of its mouth or part of its head because if it's lodged in there, you have to remember, as gross and alien sounding as this is, they're burying down into your skin and essentially anchoring on. Yeah. So by pulling it off extremely quickly, you stand the chance of damaging the animal. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with damaging a tick, but if part of it regurgitates into your flesh or part of it gets ripped off that's how you can get a secondary infection and yes and it's most likely that you had something stuck in there which so. is your body's reaction would be to swell up and make that itchy um, so that eventually you would form a, a, a pus pocket and you could pop that like a zit and get some of that out of there again super gross but th let's get into the right way to remove a tick mm -hmm. again unless the animal is fully engorged you're not in any danger at that point the best time to look for ticks is honestly when you're in your bathroom 
have your mom, your dad, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, grandma, grandpa, whoever you're comfortable with investigating, you know, your, your body on your back, you know, the ticks off the Brad, go. Brad Paisley. Brad Paisley? You could check for ticks. Why Brad Paisley? That's that famous country guy who, who has that tick song. Oh, he has a tick song. I was like, where are you going with I'm this? I'm going to check you for ticks. That's the song? He's going to walk through a wild, uh, a field of wild flowers, and then he's going to check for ticks. You know, okay, <laughs> Brad Paisley could also check you for ticks. No, somebody that you're comfortable with, check you for ticks. Mm -hmm. Ticks go towards areas that are generating the most amount of heat. And as gross as it sounds, your armpits, your belly button, your bathing suit area, this yeah. is probably where you're going to find these head. guys hang out. Your, your head, hair. your hair, your beard. Um, the best way to remove them, use good light, use tweezers. Fine point tweezers to grab as close to the bite site of the tick as you can and very gently pull backwards. You can do a little bit of a wiggling motion back and forth very, very gently to finesse the tick's mandibles and head right. out of your body. If you grab it by the back of its body, you're going to squeeze that tick and it's going to regurgitate uh. some of that blood and its enzymes into your body. You actually stand more of a chance of getting a disease from the tick by squeezing the back of its body. Right. You want to try to get it right at the point where it is bitten onto you. And then once once you remove it, what 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 else should you do? Uh, well, what I always do is definitely wash with soap and water, and I oftentimes apply Neosporin just because of the antibacterials that are in it. Sure. Um, and I kind of massage it down into that wound. Now, if you find a tick on yourself and you, for some reason, don't shower for 48 hours, let's say you're out camping, camping. or something like that, which is a, a very common case, and you do find that you have a tick on you that's engorged, that could be a point where you may want to seek medical attention. Yeah, and with Lyme disease, which is arguably the most dangerous of the tick diseases here in the U.S., um, if, you, if you have been exposed to Lyme disease through a bite, you actually potentially start to develop a classic bullseye mm -hmm. um, rash, which means the bite mark, right, little mm -hmm. penetration, and then around mm -hmm. it, there'll be another red mark. Looks like bullseye, and that is a very clear indication that you you were bit by right. the Lyme disease. At which point, getting to a hospital, getting to medical attention, they do have certain um, certain certain antibiotics and stuff that now are being used mm -hmm. to somewhat treat. It depends on how late these stages are. Yeah, how advanced the, the it is. Lyme disease is very hard to diagnose, which it is, is. is one of the troubles. It is. Sometimes you could have it dormant in your system for, for a long time. Now, mm -hmm. once again, this is not to get people panic because, once again, 36 to 48 hours, that's how long the tick has to be on you. Mm -hmm. CDC, that, that's On you and drinking. And drinking. On you and drinking. Yeah. So if you just see one and it doesn't even have any blood in it yet, you know, yeah. you're, you're fine. It's more of an irritant. But, um, but yeah, identifying that you have a tick removing it properly, that's all steps of staying safe. I would say that as a team, we are bitten by ticks maybe 30 or 40 times a year. And, you know, you know, I guess the verdict's still out, but I seem to be completely fine at this point. Yeah, it's questionable. It's questionable, maybe. But again, maybe. I do check myself incredibly well after being out yeah. there on hikes. And again, this is not to scare any of you. It's not to cause any sort of panic. It's just about being aware of the fact that in spring and summer, ticks are incredibly active. Pay attention when you get home. Shower after you've gone hiking and, and check. Yeah, and, and, and I suggest you go to the CDC, Center of Disease Control mm -hmm. website, look up ticks, and you'll see uh, an image of Here, a different species. Bow! So not only can you then identify, oh, well, the tick that's on me is you know a dog tick. It's not a black-legged tick. Yeah. Then you can actually feel a little bit more comfortable at that point, too. Right. Um, for me, coming from South Florida, um, I didn't really get that many ticks. We don't have a big deer population in, in extreme South Florida. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of mammals that these ticks are getting onto. When I first moved here, and we were go going out to all the metro parks and stuff, I remember coming back to the office many times, scratching my head and being like, what is that? And there's a tick. Yeah. And, and then I did get one in my belly button proper. I did. So what, what is the best thing to do with the tick if you get a tick on yourself and you want to get rid of it? You can't squish them. No. You, you literally cannot squish them. I, as much as I never promote like injury to an animal or anything like that, the best way in your house to get rid of a tick is to simply put it in the toilet and flush it. Flush it out. That is the best way to get rid of it.
rid of ticks. If you find one on yourself before you get in the shower, don't wash it down the drain. Flush it down the toilet. They will grab to the inside of okay, your, well, yeah. your drain or your sink. They will flush down the toilet. Yeah, they're very resilient little creatures. And once again, when you remove it, you know, and you're thinking, okay, uh, am I going to you know, say you love nature? You don't want to harm a tick. Well, by removing it already, you potentially have harmed it or damaged its mouth parts and right. stuff. So it's not going to survive either way. Um, so yes, I, I would say flushing down the toilet is the best way. Yes. And remember, guys, the females are laying thousands of eggs. So there's plenty more ticks out there. Okay. All right, let's get into some of the questions. we got some great ones that came in today through the social media feeds. Remember, as we ask them from the virtual class, keep the questions about ticks, not execution wasps or getting eaten by megalodons or any of that. Okay, uh, okay so this first one, um, I'm looking for some that we, we already didn't answer. Um, ticks, are, ticks are quite fascinating once you start to, to learn about this mm -hmm. kind of deal. Oh, this is a good one. This one's coming in from Elsa. Elsa's age 10, and she wants to know, if you put all the ticks together, rump to head, how many times would they go around the world, and why do they drink our blood? Wow. I, I, I started that one specifically because we did the one about the, the ants. ants. So ask Google okay. if you lined up all the ticks, how many times could it go around the world? Great right. question. Now, for Elsa. the ants, what was that? That was like... 12,000 times or something like that. Something like that. It was it was insane. And ticks. I feel like ticks is probably pretty close pretty ticks. close to ants. Okay. This is going to take me a little bit to find. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll ask this next question and answer this at the same time. Yeah, this sure. one's coming in from that bee guy. And that bee guy says, what is the most dangerous species of tick? I have heard of one called the Lone Star Tick that can, so, that can somehow cause an allergy to meat. But are there some with more fatal effects? And I would say the most dangerous species is, again, the black-legged tick, also yeah. known as the deer tick. Lyme disease um, is arguably the most potent disease that you can get from a tick species. Are you finding an answer? Do we stump Google? Yeah. I, I mean, Google would think, I mean, did I pose it right? How many times can all ticks together circle the earth? All, I mean, maybe. How many ticks are there? How, how many? many that's good. Thanks. All right, I'm taking a question from the virtual Thanks. class. Hold on. Uh, okay, this is a good one. This one's coming in from, from Andrew. Andrew wants to know, how long do ticks live? Uh, that's a great question because I believe that ticks can winter over. Yes. They can live longer than a year. It all has to do with their breeding cycle. So until a male and a female have bred, and until that female has laid her eggs, those ticks can continue to survive. Right, so... So, uh, you know, if you have a little nymph that isn't finding food mm -hmm. uh, and a host and growing, because they grow based on their feeding cycles, um, they can live a few years. Yeah. Yeah, a few years. But once they do get to adulthood, uh, then they may die. I guess it's just a, it's a really lonely life as a tick if you go three years and you haven't found somebody to mate with yet. Mate with or, 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 or a host to drink blood. I guess know? so. I mean... I mean, are you saying to give ticks a break and let them? I mean, I'm just saying they can't. You can't all be survivors. Some of them right. are in solitude, I guess. Okay, yes. got another great question here from Jolly Ann One, and I love this question. Yes. This is a great misnomer. She wants to know, or or he, I think it's a she. Um, how close to a tick do you have to be for it to jump on you? Oh, here's the thing: ticks don't actually jump. No, it's fleas that jump. Ticks do not jump. So that at least dials down the, the terror level a little right. bit. Instead Let's of them jump. jumping, they, they use their questing. Yeah. So they actually have to, you have to brush up against them for them to actually be able to grapple on. Same way with leeches. Now, leeches certainly can swim, but leeches can't, like, torpedo forward at things. And, like. Yeah. That's a great question because I think you, you do imagine yeah. it takes jumping on people. Right. You know, but, um, yeah, you're doing actually all the work by getting – Close to that tick. I would say one of the most panicked feelings you'll ever have is when you're driving in your vehicle after hiking in a park and you're like, oh my gosh, something's crawling on me. And you do this on your neck and you're like, oh my gosh, it's a tick. Yeah. You know, and you're like, ah, people, people panic big time with ticks. The thing is, you'll never feel a tick bite you. Mm -hmm. They have a numbing agent in their saliva that, and an anticoagulant like leeches 
you'll never feel a tick bite you. So if you're holding a tick, I mean, you can hold it in between your fingers like this and watch it squirm. You'll, it will never bite you. It's not like a spider. But it is weird when you get the sensation that something's on you. Yes, I it's terrible. Our last trip to Virginia, um, yeah, every time we got back into the Jeep, we kept like, being, oh, I've got a tick on me. Oh, he's got a tick. You know, it's, yeah. it's just part of it when you're out there. Okay, I'm going to take one from the virtual class here. Okay. Uh, Miriam. Miriam wants to know, can a tick drink so much blood that it explodes? No. No, they know when they're full enough and they're gorged. And at that point, they'll actually back their little heads and mandibles out of the victim and fall off and pop off into the grass. Yeah. I mean, it looks like they're going to explode. It does. Yeah. It's I've crazy. Seen, I've seen some ticks on some animals that are like, whoa. Have you ever popped a tick? I have popped a tick. You have? Not on me, but I've taken them off of a dog. Uh, actually, my, my, my old dog. And um, yeah, I mean... <laughs> I put it's, it. I put, it was like a grape explosion. I mean, I put it on the ground and I just. Uh, Mario Alcoa, tick slayer. Well, I didn't want my dog to get any more ticks. And of course, if you have a dog or a cat, you know we spend a lot of money on like yeah. front line and stuff to. And I would say it's the fleas don't bother me as much as the ticks. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, fleas are a little irritating, but, but not as bad as ticks. Not as bad as ticks. Okay, so we've got another question here from the virtual class. Jeremy wants to know. How have we not become overrun with ticks, with the number of eggs that are being laid every single year? And I guess, I'll let you answer that. I've, I've got my own theory. So okay. how, how have we not become overrun with ticks at this point? Because, I mean, with ants, it's like ants are kind of off in their own social colonies doing doing their thing, their own world, yeah. right? But ticks, ticks don't seem to be out for any good. Well, like, like all animals... There is predators, and mm -hmm. there is ways that their population is going to be controlled. Um, there are a lot of birds that actually will eat ticks. Ah, okay. So have you seen the little birds that go around and are just, like, picking off insects and, and arachnids, like yeah. ticks? So there's a lot of um, a lot of birds that eat ticks. And then there's also a lot of ticks that just don't survive. They become, they hatch out, and mm -hmm. they'll find a host, and then they kind of die. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So, so there are animals out there controlling the tick population. Mm -hmm. To be honest... There are probably more ticks out there than we can fathom. The thing is, they're just so small, we're not capable of, of really recognizing that. Yeah. I'm sure there are some entomologists out there that are specifically studying ticks that can give some more solidified answer as to, like, what is their purpose that they're serving? I mean, that, that's why I look like it's something like a tick. I'm like, what purpose is a tick really serving for our planet? Well, you could say the same about mosquitoes, which, to me, mosquitoes have always been, you know, uh, I've, I've always been annoyed by mosquitoes every right. time I go out into the field. But uh, in terms of ecological purpose, if there are other species eating them, mm -hmm. then that is food for another animal. Mm -hmm. you know, mosquitoes, too, get eaten by certain birds and stuff, too. Well, I definitely feel that maybe the mosquito is one that we should do for micro funding because we're about we to get into mosquito season oh, man. as well. Yeah. Coming soon. All right. Oh, I got another question here from virtual class. Um, this one's coming in from Lauren. Lauren wants to know, do ticks engorge on spiders? No. Ticks will not eat insects or arachnids because they don't have proper blood. Yeah, it's a whole different uh, system, uh, circulatory system, right. that those insects and, and or, you know, other arachnids mm -hmm. have, so no. Um, but, yeah, I've, I've seen, I mean, we've all seen, we have seen ticks on birds. We've seen yeah. them on reptiles, on turtles, mm -hmm. you know. They could get anywhere, especially if you think about a snake or a reptile. They have that tough armor, that's mm -hmm. no scale. But the ticks will actually find their way in between the scales yeah. to get that little like fleshy part. It's crazy. A lot of times that when you see ticks on a snake or a reptile, it looks like it's part of the body. You have to really know what you're looking for to be like, that's definitely a tick and not a scale. I've never seen ticks on, on fish, though. No. No fish. No, they'll get uh, you know other parasites. And anything that's yeah. fully aquatic, ticks are not. Ticks do not go in the water. Water will kill and drown ticks. Yeah. I guess that's important to note. If you wanna if you wanna exterminate some ticks, water. Like I said, the toilet uh, is the best way. So I got one time for one more, okay, one, one more. more question. Yeah. This one's from, from Casey and I'm I'm just this is kind of a repeat answer. Casey wants to know. Uh, what's the best way to remove a tick from yourself and or your pets, dogs and cats, and what should you do with them after? And I just want to repeat this one in case there's some people that are just joining us. The best way to remove a tick, whether it's from your dog, your cat, your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, 
whoever mm. is with a pair of fine point tweezers. Yeah. And you want to grab the tick as close to its head and mouth as you can. And you want to remove it slowly. Don't yank it. A slow, even motion. You can even wiggle it back and forth a little bit. Right. Don't grab it by the body. If you squeeze its body, it's going to regurgitate into that wound. Yeah, and then the wound can get infected. Now, one thing I, I have done in the past when my dog has gotten ticks, and there's multiple ticks. Yeah. You know, I sat them down, and I start getting them. I actually got a little container, and I put some rubbing alcohol in it. Mm-hmm. And then every tick I got is put into the rubbing alcohol. And mm-hmm. then I flush that away. Yeah. yeah. That, that also works too. Rubbing alcohol will kill ticks. Yeah. Okay, and then what you do with them, rubbing alcohol, uh, alcohol or flush them down the toilet. Right. And then... It's not often that I would tell anybody to flush any animal down the toilet, but in the sake of ticks, I think we'll be okay. The planet's got plenty of them. Yeah, I mean, the fact that they can carry diseases is the reason why, yes. right? Because it is a health danger to, to people. Right. Very, very different from leeches. Leeches do not carry diseases. Ticks do. They are, are definitely not the friendliest of creatures that are out there on the face of the planet. But, but they are uh, micro. They are micro, which that will wrap up today's... Micro Monday, join us tomorrow for Terrifying Tuesday, where we will be talking about monitor lizards. Oh. And you may not think that a monitor is something terrifying, but when you think about the Komodo dragon, which is the world's largest monitor, it could be pretty scary if you ran into one of those guys in the middle of the Indonesian islands in the yeah. dark. And it's an appropriate lesson because what's also tomorrow? Tomorrow night is actually the season finale, a two-hour special event on Animal Planet, wrapping up season one of Brave the Wild. And the last episode is all about the Parenti monitor, the yep. largest lizard species in Australia. It's pretty epic, guys. We'll talk about that more tomorrow. As for homework, we don't have any oh, episodes no. necessarily no. on ticks yet. But what did Mario put on here? Remember to check for ticks while playing outside, especially in areas of dense vegetation, which must mean that tonight's homework is get outside in your backyard and yeah. have an adventure of your own. Enjoy that sunshine, guys. We'll see you tomorrow for Terrifying Tuesday. I'm Kyrie Peterson. I'm Mario Dakota. Be brave. Stay wild. Stay healthy. We'll see you guys in class tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern time. All right. Bye, guys.